Hey you, you know how when you get your game on, you assume your position at the same old desk or couch or piece of carpet that you've worn out? Not necessarily a bad thing, because once you hit the menu screen, all you focused on is what you about to play. The newest VR headsets are giving us some super dope alternative ways to shoot, drive, and fly and play just about anything like a boss. Since they first dropped the trailer for the Quest 3, it started looking like the futuristic possibility of playing anything, anywhere was about to be the new norm. VR is dope, but one of the most exciting things about the trailer was the kid sitting on his bed playing a Game Pass game on a big ass virtual screen floating in his bedroom. Ever since then, it was my dream to lay in the bed like a damn bum and play Starfield on a virtual monitor above me. I mean, a real monitor would be cool, but who wants to worry about getting slapped in the face with about 15 pounds of plastic and circuit boards? Plus, it'd be nice to move around and readjust and resize. Throw another monitor next to it. Just make it fit whatever you need at the time. So the idea is to make gaming adapt to you rather than require you to be changed to one single place whenever you're in the mood to crank up a game lo and behold through a very cool client i was fortunate enough to get my hands on a quest 3 which is cool because i'm just a poor boy from the country trying to get his game on the best way i know how just like you might be so take a stroll with your boy and see if gaming on virtual monitors is your cup of henny First up is big screen if you're not familiar it's a collection of vr environments ranging from a bedroom theaters deep space you can hang out with other people in public rooms and watch movies together, share vids, or play darts while you watch somebody throw a tomato at the guy singing karaoke. Or you can just stay in a private room and do your own thing. The environments all give you a big screen that you can use to watch media from a streaming service or YouTube or better yet, just stream in your stuff from your desktop. And that's where the gaming comes in. Cranking up your game in a classroom after school lets out or in the seat of a car at a drive-in theater is the bee's knees for the real OGs. A brand new environment changes up the vibe from what you're used to every day. In real life, your home is your home, but with big screen, it's like your home has its own secret portal to your cozy little hideaway in another universe. When you crank up a game in there, it feels a little different. One, because you're typically not this far away from your screen. If you ever played a game on a projector or some kind of giant screen, it's a completely different experience. The distance and scale adds a degree of separation that's not present when your monitor is only a couple feet away. So it takes a little more time to feel the same immersion. Also, it's a little different because you're not in your same surroundings. If you ever taken your console or desktop to somebody else's house and played it, you get what I mean. Same game, same controls, it's just a little unusual looking at it from a different angle and different lighting, different room tone without the usual ambient sounds and your limbs and body aren't at the edge of your periphery. But like anything else, you just adapt and become used to it. Then you're playing games like normal. Well, a little better than normal. First of all, even if you only own one physical monitor, you got the option to pull up the quest menu, which you can use to pull up apps like YouTube, which is clutch, man. Say you need to look up something and only a quick dig that 32 vid will do. You can have YouTube running in a display wherever you want, and you don't have to alt tab out of the game to use it, which is quite dandy, Mr. Beauregard. Whatever you need for the game you're playing. Pretty sure big screen used to have native support for additional displays without the need for the quest menu apps, but they either pulled them or or they buried them somewhere I can't find, maybe behind the paywall. You can also have a smaller version of the big screen nearby, which is good for things like finer text that doesn't read well at a distance, even though it's on a giant screen, or just the game on. The overall feel and experience playing a big screen is good. It's cozy, it's quick and easy to change environments, and best of all, it's really easy to figure out with no instruction or tutorials needed. The menus are simple and user-friendly and give quick access to whatever you need. The dynamic lighting's coming off the screen is a very cool touch. Plus, you got the slider to crank up the ambient light to suit your mood. Just about all the available environments have been there for a very long time, but there's a good amount of them to hop through. The residence is my fave. It's the definition of cozy with the big couch and the garden window in the corner with rain coming down outside. There's a handful of theaters, an outdoor patio with a cool mood, and all kind of well thought out places. If you need a break, you can throw on a movie or show or hop over to a social room and see what folks are getting up to. If you're about to buy a headset, this should be the first app you download. But it's not perfect. If I'm not mistaken, there's no option to stream it in above 1080p, which sounds like a bit of a bummer, but it's easier on your headset, which means it's easier on your battery life. Plus, in VR, where the lens is right in front of your eyes, it's not the same as what a giant screen would look like in 1080p in real life. It doesn't look soft at all. The performance with a demanding game like Star Citizen or Cyberpunk 2077 won't be exactly the same as it would if you were just playing on your monitor, especially if you own a really expensive monitor. Cyberpunk definitely showed some lag. I'm sure lowering the settings will help, but at 1080p and a lesser color space, it'll start to get noticeable really quick. This is the monitor versus the headset. 
In Star Citizen, the frame rate was pretty solid, but there were moments where you would see a bunch of artifacting pop up as the frame buffer struggled a bit. It didn't happen often, and lowering the bit rate would probably eliminate it. I didn't really notice artifacting in Cyberpunk 2077, so it could be peculiar to Star Citizen. There's some noticeable input lag like you'd expect, but nothing crazy. As I went back and forth between the headset and the monitor, how much there actually is started to become muddy to the point where I wasn't sure if there was much of it at all. So you probably wouldn't want to compete in esports this way, but it's not bad, especially if you're not playing a Twitch shooter. Where you might struggle is with games that have a thousand buttons that you can't see on your keyboard. I was able to get by in Star Citizen because I have almost everything bound to my holder and my controller and mouse, but there's still times where I need to see the keyboard. That still wasn't bad though, depending how your headset is strapped or clamped on. <laughs> making it sound like your head is in vice grips, you might just be able to get a quick look down your nose and through the gaps to see a keyboard. That breaks your immersion a bit, but it's a simple workaround that works. I love the experience in big screen. I'm in there at least three to five times a week watching videos, and I think I'll find myself gaming in it a little more, especially if I pick up more chill games that really work with the vibe. Immersed is an app I was looking forward to trying out because it's got a super useful feature that I'll get into in a sec. Like big screen, you can be in different virtual environments that are either public or private. It's more of a productivity oriented app so the social rooms I visited were populated with folks working a virtual Starbucks if you will except nobody demands your name after an overcomplicated drink order the first time you hop in it requires a tutorial which I gotta say I hated it. The Quest 3 could have been at least part of the blame. It just wasn't working right until after a restart or two. I tried to record going through the tutorial a lot of times. Part of the tutorial is setting up this spiffy feature that lets you create little portals to the outside world that you can use to see your keyboard, which is dope. But I think it's possible all the lights on my desk, especially the Toby eye tracker, may have been throwing off the depth sensor. I mean, I don't really know, but those Toby lights do weird things like cause distortion in the Quest camera. So who knows what was actually happening? Whatever the case, I was struggling to create a portal or around the keyboard and the software would get impatient and basically tell me to figure it out later. <laughs> and when I didn't click buttons quick enough, the buttons would become unresponsive and I had to start over. Not cool, Robert Frost. But after finally getting through the setup, it's a very cool alternative to big screen. First of all, you get three screens natively built into the app and you can place them anywhere you want. In big screen, you can use the Quest menu apps and Merst gives you virtual monitors that you can position anywhere. The virtual environments I was in were less whimsical, cozy, or grand than big screen. And lean more toward crisp clean locations that are less distracting and more conducive to productivity but it's still comfortable the bar has a nice feel to it that i'd like to see a night version for positioning yourself in the leather chairs next to the window is relaxing and slinking back to the rear offers a little more secluded feel while retaining a view of the venue the lodge feels just right to get some work done and with an occasional glance out the window to give your eyes some variety but we're talking about gaming so here's something helpful for that the portals that i mentioned earlier gives you a little window to the real world while you're in the vr environment and that's super useful because you might need to glance down to find those keys you don't use that often. You might have a glass of Henny on deck that you don't want to spill into your keyboard while blindly swiping your hands around. There's all kinds of things you might want to be visible. So instead of having to leave the environment, you get the best of both worlds by choosing the portal shape and putting it wherever you need to see. I gotta say, it's pretty surreal to be in one environment and then look through a portal at your IRL environment. It feels like a fantasy movie where they have a window to another dimension. Pretty crazy stuff. You also get a whiteboard to write on, which I think is super cool because you can make little notes to reference as you're playing the game. For example, if there's an item at a specific location you don't want to forget, or if you're space trucking and want to remember the commodities and stops you need to make. I don't know why I'm explaining what notes are for. You know what the hell notes are for. When you're tired of playing peekaboo through the portals, you can just use an interface on your wrist to select mixed reality and do away with the environment entirely, and you'll still have your virtual monitors. It's great because one, it makes your desk more functional. I personally wouldn't have the room for three monitors of this size, and two, you don't have to be tied to the desk at all. You can just get up and go game in a more comfortable place or just somewhere different, whether it's a different room or a different part of the same room. Changing things up keeps you flexible, and this allows you to do it, and I recommend you do it because change keeps you sharp on the edge where you gotta be. I've sat in this chair maybe a handful of times since I've been here, so now it's like gaming in a change of venue. The resolutions are kind of strange to my 16 by 9 aspect ratio eyes if you take a look at the site. The pro version has better resolutions and more screens for 5 bucks a month, but you can unlock pro for free just by using the app for a few days. I don't know how long that's going to last, but I ain't turning nothing down but my collar, so I'll be on it. But what I actually found in the app itself is that there were a ton of resolutions, three pages worth. 
I was able to crank the main monitor to match my 2560 by 1440 monitor. I don't know if 4K would be an option since I don't have a 4K monitor myself, but that seems like it might be asking a bit much to stream that much data in, even if you have a headset that supports it like the Pimax, which I would love to try just for the field of view. Gaming on the monitors is good. In fact, it feels more fluid than big screen. I didn't get any artifacting in Star Citizen or the dropped frames in Cyberpunk. I mean, it's not going to impress the video file, but as virtual monitors go, it's impressive in its own lane. Everything looks and feels crisp. Having more resolution is great, combined with having screens positioned at this more practical distance, plus the additional customizable displays make Immerse a really dope way to game. The less monitors you have going, the better the frame rate. Turning off one of the monitors gave me a bump of four or five frames. If you have any experience in Star Citizen, you know the frame rate is all over the place. My experience with it in Immerse was anywhere between mid-30s on a planet's surface, with volumetric clouds cranked as high as they go, and 120 frames a sec out in space, so pretty close to a normal experience. Had a couple problems though. When I cranked Cyberpunk up, my cursor stuck to the middle of the screen. On my real monitor, it was fine, just the virtual monitor had it. In Star Citizen, the cursor wasn't fixed to the center, but it was still there. I've heard about a workaround to get rid of it, but come on, man, that's crazy annoying. You gotta fix this immersed. Another issue was that the resolution would randomly lower to 1080. I don't know if that's something I accidentally did or purposely done by the app, maybe a dynamic resolution thing and can be controlled, but nobody want to deal with that. At some point, don't ask me how, but it ceased to be a problem for the rest of the time I spent recording. I just hope their visor MR glasses are in better shape than this. Those two items plus the tutorial are a stain on an otherwise superb app. Once you get it going, it's the coolest of the cool. Good resolutions, cool interface, portals for your convenience, and the games run well on it, even though it's designed as a productivity piece. This will probably be my go-to anytime I want to get it done in mixed reality. Like I mentioned earlier, this all started with an imminent dream of laying in bed playing Starfield on the screen above me, so it's just right to make that happen through the app from the company who owns the developer of Starfield, the Xbox app. The most perplexing thing was connecting an Xbox controller to the Quest. It would connect through Bluetooth, then lose connection, which requires you to remove it from connected devices and start over. So I put up the browser looking for a solution, and the force must have been with this guy who somehow stumbled onto a fix that's probably not documented anywhere at Microsoft. Connect it, then immediately press the menu and start buttons at the same time, and that locks it in for some reason. Somebody buy this man a drink. Anywho, once your controller is connected, you're in the app with all the games. The environment itself is okay, I guess. Looks like an empty Xbox convention venue, which is probably not the message they want to be sending. And there's no other environments to choose from. In fact, there's nothing else but the room and the app. No floating menus to conjure up, no mixed reality portals, no options of any kind. And you can't bring in the quest menu apps to bring in a browser or YouTube. Just you, the empty room, and the Game Pass app. Oh yeah, you need Game Pass Ultimate to use this, which is 16 bucks a month. I doubt I'll hang on to it just to play in this empty room and have the Game Pass app float in front of me. There is one benefit to it though, you can game with it completely wirelessly with no PC running. Big screen and immerse require you to either be wired to the PC or connected through AirLink, which I have not used because my experience with AirLink on the Quest 2 was Fire Festival bad. So no PC required, just a headset and ideally a battery pack because Quest 3's battery life, even with a link cable, is Kevin Hart short, two hours max, but there are cables out there that can help with that. And if you're a company that makes them, I would not be offended if you sent me one. I was prepared for a really laggy, just bad experience. I'd read about a bunch of problems with the Game Pass app on Quest, so my expectations were low. Running a AAA game on a standalone headset just sounds like a bad idea, but it ran great. No lag. I don't know what kind of frames I was getting. It wasn't 60, but it was more than playable. I felt like somewhere around the 30 frames a sec range, but it's probably more of a Starfield thing since it's capped at 30 on the Xbox console. Other games have higher frame rates and even 120 hertz mode. The graphics are probably comparable to what you get somewhere around medium settings on PC. Maybe a little lower, possibly. It's pretty much what you'd expect when cloud gaming. The graphics aren't nothing to write home about. There's noticeable latency and the performance isn't going to be what you're used to with your big PCs and consoles. You about to run your games at impressive levels, which might not sound like the bee's knees, but for gaming in the cloud with just a headset and controller, life is pretty good here. You can't ask for the same level of fidelity your big boxes deliver, but when you just want to continue your game wherever you want without running up the electrical bill, this is where it's at. Alternatively, if you want better quality in browsers and whatnot for Game Pass and VR, you could always run Game Pass through your desktop through big screen or immersed. Always more than one way to drink some Henny. There's one more I tried, but it ran so bad that it wasn't worth giving it its own section and some of you be surprised to hear that it was virtual desktop. 
Initially, I was all about it because they had some very cool environments. The Star Citizen environment almost had me ready to try out the non-native, non-stereoscopic Star Citizen VR workaround for the game. Almost. I used the Steam VR version of it through Questlink, and I think it's possible that I may have just run into some technical hiccups and a combination of all the software running at the same time to run and record everything. Even after shutting down some things, I was getting single digit frames. Maybe the Quest app version of it runs a little better, but I wasn't going to pay 20 bucks to find out. Most of everything seen here is free, with the exception of the Xbox app which requires Game Pass Ultimate. There's some additional paid features in between all of them, but besides Game Pass, the functionality that you've seen in the vid was all free. 99. Prior to the Quest 3 and Vision Pro, there was always the notion of VR headsets are cool, but they're not just there yet. And although you can guarantee it's only going to get better from here, you can finally say that they offer something worth getting. VR is dope. I love it. But there was always something keeping you from using it more frequently. And for a lot of folks, that was pulling the headset on and off your dome piece. Now that we've got decent pass through, which makes some things more convenient with it on than without it, like following recipes or workouts, blah, blah, blah. It solves that old problem of getting in and out of the headset. And now you can use it for some quality gaming anywhere you want, which is a game changer in some aspects. Something that's on my wish list is to be able to put things in the environment, both the virtual ones and the pass through. I appreciate the little robot vacuums going by a big screen. Those plus the dynamic lighting make them a less static environment. But I'd like to be able to have a dog sniffing around the room and laying down in the dog bed. SpongeBob making Krabby Patties in the corner. Or turn my room into an aquarium like this guy did. It might sound unusual, but virtual reality and mixed reality, aka XR, is bringing new things that we never even considered before. So let's crank it up to 10 and see where it takes us. I'm gonna need you techie specky guys to go out there and make something hot for the people to vibe with. On the more VR focused end of things, there's some really interesting solutions to VR locomotion in this vid. Big Immaculate shout out to all my execs, Patreons, YouTube members, and Super Chatters. Fly Dirty Citizens. 